how to change one scale into another scale. Coming up next on Monster Hobbies Tips and Techs. Hello everybody and welcome back to another great Monster Hobbies Tips and Tech video where today I show you some of the tips and techs that I have learned throughout all my times and stuff that I learned from my dad. Of course he was a draftsman for the telephone company and anyway, what I want to show you all today is how to take something of one scale and turn it into something of another scale. So I'm working on this diorama and I need a building for it. And I'm building the diorama in 125th scale for my model cars and some figures and things that I have. But the building is in 187th scale, which is model train size. So I want to take that building from model train size and bring it into the real world size and then shrink that back down to 25th scale. So uh, let's see how that's all done. So here's a building that I really like and I want to incorporate this into our diorama. However, this is of course a small town USA made by Ricks. This is the cab company and I figured it would be kind of nice for my diorama. Except for one thing, this is 187th scale, and my diorama is 125th. And I'm going to be using these people here. There's a woman, and here I've got a guy. And I also want to use my 125th scale uh, Plymouth here, 1941. You can sort of see a problem here. The <laughs> The guys are bigger than the building, and so is the Plymouth, right? You could almost fit this in the trunk. Well, maybe not really, but at any rate. So we want to get our Plymouth and our people out of here. And what we want to do is scale this thing up into, of course, 1 24th scale. These guys were printed a friend of mine with a 3D printer. It's pretty cool. Anyway, um, so how do we do that? How do we get something that is this small into a size that we want. Well, that's where the mathematical formula comes in. So, of course, this being a three-dimensional object, we're going to have length uh, by height by width equals 3D, right? So we've got that building as a box. So we need to figure out if it's in one size, how long it is in the next size up or down. You can scale down as well. So we need to do basic mathematics here. So uh, let's just begin with that. First off, we want to find out our length. So all three of these are going to end up being the same, you know, mathematically. But first off, we need to find out what our length is. So L is equal to length. So length of what? Of the item in the original scale. So our length is the length of the item in the original scale. So our height would also be the height of the item in the original scale and the width would be the width of the item in the original scale. So with those three, you'll be able to scale this up. So then what is the original scale? So our original scale of the building is HO scale, which is 1 87th scale. So 1 87th scale is the original scale. So you'll note that this is a fraction. So for every one item, or uh, inch actually, so uh, for every one, there's 87 times. So if your length is one foot in the real world, in the HO scale train, it will be one foot divided by 87. Do you see where I'm getting it? So 1 87th scale is 87 times. So You'll, to make up the real item, you need 87 models go on your length, your height, and your width to equal up 1 to 1 scale. So this would be 1 to 1 scale up here. And this is HO scale here. 
on this side. So in order to get this our length to figure out what it is, we need to multiply whatever it is in the uh, measurements we're going to use by the scale it's in. Okay, so we need to find out how long is this building. So I've got the side of the building because if you look at the front, this isn't the length here. What's this value? It's the width. This is how wide the building is. And this is, of course, the height. But we don't have length. Length would be like that deep. <laughs> so we need the, the side wall here for our length and height. But this is not the width. Well, I guess it is in a way, but you know. So we need to find out how long this is in the back. So I'm going to use millimeters here. Actually, centimeters. So millimeters, of course, is the divisions in between each centimeter. So this is 10 centimeters long, which would actually be 100 millimeters. Okay, so let's figure this out mathematically here. Okay, so we say 100 millimeters. So that's how long this is in 187th scale. So to get this into the real world scale, so that's one to one, uh, if you know your algebra, of course, what do you need to do? You need to multiply this uh, by 87 to get the one to one scale. So you take 100 millimeters and you multiply it by 87, which is our scale, and you should get 8,700 millimeters. So in the real world, in one-to-one -one scale, that length of that building, which is here, this in the real world is 807 or 8,700 millimeters. So that sounds pretty long, okay? So now what we need to do is get this into 25th scale. So what do we do? Well, we're in fractions again. So this time we have 1 and 25th scale. So if we put this one on top, you get 8,700 millimeters now divided by 25. And what does that equal? Well, of course, we need a little bit of help. So in order to help us is this nice Canon calculator. So what did I say? 87 there, 8,700. Then you divide it by 25 to get into 25th scale, which is what we want. And now that equals 348 millimeters. But millimeters are hard to measure in with the tape measure when you're trying to scale this thing up. So we need to get this into centimeters. And to do that, of course, you divide by 10. So divide by 10. So now we get 34.8 centimeters. So that would be, if we're going to 1 25th scale, that, of course, is this length here, the 10 millimeters. Explode this up to real world scale for 8,700 millimeters, then divide it back into 25th scale, and then you get 348 millimeters, which is on a tape measure way out here, right? That's <laughs> somewhere. So uh, yeah, then it goes 34.8 centimeters. So let's just make that up here. There's 34.8, it's almost 35 centimeters. So that's how long the wall would be in 25th scale. So then the formula should be measurement, which will be M times scale equals one to one scale divided by new scale will equal your x value. That's our formula. 
the M scale. So M being the original length of the item, or width, or height, multiplied by the scale, so in this case 87th scale, which gives you the real world measurement, and then you divide that by the new scale, which in this case is 25th scale, and then you'll equal your x value. So let's just use this again, just to prove our thing here, but we'll use a different scale. So M would be 100 millimeters, Let's say it's 32 scale, times 32 scale would equal 3,200 millimeters. But then we want to divide that into, let's stick with 24th scale. And that will give us 128 millimeters. And then dividing that by 10 to get into centimeters, so it would be 12.8. So, in 132 scale, we would have 12.8 centimeters. So now this shot required a change of camera angle because what I want to show you here is our earth-toned building down at the bottom. This is, of course, the HO scale. And then the pink insulation foam that I'm cutting out, which is our 25th scale building. So I don't have any of the windows in, as you can see, but I do have the blue line notches up here which is this shape in there. And what I did was use our tape measure there to measure this height. And then I multiplied it by 87 and then divided it by 25 and came up with the measurements for here. Of course, dividing again by 10 to get it out of millimeters into centimeters, which is something I can use a little easier. So this height here is now this height here in 25th scale. And then you measure in this way to the first point, but you also measure up here to this first point, because of course this is higher from here down, you know what I'm saying. So you measure up to there, which is up to this blue line, and then you measure in this way across till you hit your first point, which is there, and then up again and point and up, or you can measure from here to here, or from there, and mark it all the way across on the pink foam, which is an easier way to do it. And then measure from there down to get this point. And then, of course, this goes there and there and there and there. So mark it across. And this here is the top of that. So basically, this is how our building looks once you enlarge it into 25th scale using that mathematical formula. So how well did we do with scaling this up? Well, there's our building there. And this is a 41 Plymouth that my dad made a model of. Or actually, it's not really a Plymouth, but it looks pretty close to it. My dad made this up uh, using flat sheets of plastic, believe it or not. Anyway, so there it is there. Now, it's too bad I don't have the actual doors on here. But this, of course, is our 25th scale Plymouth. And if we just crank the camera up proportionately, it should be about right. So let's just go down a little and let's zoom back a bit. Yeah, just go up a little bit. There we go. So proportionately, you got the Plymouth and this car. The top of the roof is coming up to the top of the windows, which would mean, actually not the top of the windows, the center brace. So which would mean that the center brace for our windows would be right there somewhere. And then we've got the top of the window, maybe up here. And then this gap in here between there and these windows which put it those windows somewhere up in this zone and then our facade on the top going up here to here so i think once we uh, get all the windows and everything in there that it should pretty much come up to the right proportions in 25th scale so just to further along this story of you know making these things larger in scale and whatnot I happen to have these resin doors, which are like garage-style doors, that I got from some trade-in or something bizarre. Anyway, I measured these things out compared to our building, and the doors on our building end up being 12.18 centimeters tall, going this way. Not too concerned about wide, because these are just something, you know, I found. But basically, these doors measured out are 12.5 
centimeters. So it's very close. So there, if we put that up against the wall here, you'd get a rough estimate of how tall those doors are for the garage compared to the people and the car and everything else. So I do believe we have mission accomplished here on our building and scaling it up. Now I just got to cut out all the rest in here and then carve in the bricks and figure all that stuff out into scale. Put the windows down the side on this side and uh, copy the front to look like the front of our HO scale building, which is there. Yeah, and it should all work out in the end. Actually, I just thought of something that is a little bit useful here in case uh, you guys start to do something like this and discover there's a problem with it. And that is the back panel. Now, if you're to scale this thing perfectly across here to here, you might find that your building in this scale uh, starts to widen out or go at a funny angle off on these back walls here. And if that starts to happen, the reason is that we have to take into account the thickness of the material being used. Now, the back panel wall on the model kit is actually sized to fit in between the two back walls. So the front panel is here, and then the back or the side walls glue the way this does. So your outer wall goes right to the edge, and then these glue behind the edge. So in the back there, it's going to be narrower. Now, I scaled this thing up and I got somewhere in between a quarter inch and just shy of an inch and a half. Now, you don't really want to take your half inch, not inch and a half, half inch. You don't want to take your half inch styrofoam and try to sand it down until it gets to the right scale. It's easier actually just to, when you do your end wall here, just to make it a little narrower, but the right distance to fit in between here and here. So what you want to do is with this, you want to do both side walls and the front and glue them perfectly 45 degree angle, uh, you know, in here. And then at the end, remeasure that length here and here with the real tape measure and go that way. And then you can scale out your windows and everything, you know, with our measurements in here and still get it pretty accurate. Just find the center line here and work your way out on either end. But remember, you're going to make this fit in between the half inch thickness instead of trying to measure and scale it perfectly to whatever this thickness is. So try to build your styrofoam building in 25th scale the same exact way as it's put together in the HO scale and you won't go wrong. And one final little note is don't try to go absolutely insane with getting the measurement dead solid perfect. Remember, you are human and you're not a computerized CNC machine. So uh, if this height ends up being, you know, you have to approximate it to 28 mil or centimeters or whatever, instead of 28.176, you know, just do it. <laughs> like, make it, round it to even numbers, whatever works best for you. Um, remember, you're going to have a little bit of human error in there, but nothing that a piece of sandpaper on a on a good board of NBF can't fix. Well, I sure hope you enjoyed that great tips and text video where I showed you how to take something from one scale, bring it up to the real world size, and then put it into a different scale. And it's an old trick my dad taught me with all this sort of stuff. It's basically simple mathematics. But I sure hope it will help you to solve some of those mysteries of the challenges of taking something from one size and converting it into another. So until next time everyone, happy model building and don't be afraid to uh, try something and if it doesn't work the first time around, just keep trying and maybe it'll get better. <laughs> you best. Oh yeah. Uh. You saw it right here, folks.